All right, so I'm going to show you a skill today, and this is uh, arterial lines. And it's going to be very similar to all pressure lines, and I figure that uh, this actually will be helpful for my um, former grads, colleagues that maybe don't work in the ICU often, so ER nurses, OR nurses, <clears throat> and um, people that are new to the ICU, students, at least you'll have an idea of what the nurses are doing. Okay, So an arterial line is used for two reasons. <clears throat> primarily for monitoring blood pressure and um, secondly for drawing blood. It's very nice if the patient can have a line that we can just draw blood from, especially if we're drawing blood you know, four to six times a day. It can be a lot to try to poke them, decreasing infection risk, that kind of a thing. We don't see as many arterial lines as we used to. Uh, sometimes now we only see them post-op or post-heart cath. Okay? So, uh, I thought it would be helpful for, uh, for you guys to have this video. So an arterial line is going to be like an IV in someone's artery. And so we, we usually use the radial anymore. And so um, the pulse, it, where you feel the pulse, that's where the physician will insert the arterial line. Some facilities, respiratory therapists can insert them, but generally it's a surgeon of some sort or um, a cardiologist or some pulmonologist will put in arterial line, anesthesiologist also, okay? So an arterial line looks like an IV, but it's a little bit longer, and it's gonna go into an artery, usually radial. <clears throat> if they're a heart cath patient, then it would be in the groin, okay? Uh, so attaching the arterial line to uh, the, all the tubing and everything, that's gonna be the nurse's responsibility to prime the line and get it all ready to go. The insertion of the arterial line is a video for another day, but that would be a lot like putting in a central line. It's going to have a sterile field, and the physician is going to gown up and, and put on all the sterile uh, PPE and that type of thing. Okay, so you're going to have some arterial tubing, and so it's going to have a spike, and it's going to have a transducer. The transducer, now remember I'm not an engineer, I'm a nurse, and I try to keep things simple. So the transducer is a magic little box that takes the movement of the catheter inside of someone's artery, and it transfers it into the monitor and makes it into a picture so that we know kind of what we're looking at. Okay, so this is the, what we call the transducer, this little part here, okay? And then we have a syringe, and then we have a port for blood draws, and then the end here, okay? So when you're very first flushing it, you're gonna take it out of the box, and you're going to grab a bag of normal saline, a 500 ml bag. Now, in the cath lab, they might be using a bag with heparin in it, and we generally switch out the heparin once they arrive to, in the ICU. Uh, that would be something to ask the physician what kind of orders they would like. It used to all be heparin, but now we've switched over to mostly normal saline. Okay, so I've got a 500 bag of normal saline here. You're going to spike this just like you would spike an IV. Okay, and so you get that spiked. I do have a roller clamp here, I'm going to clamp. And so you're going to squeeze your chamber. Okay. Now when you're priming it, it's just like an IV except we have a transducer here. So the difference with priming an arterial line or a pressure line and an, an IV line is that <clears throat> we have this port here by the transducer. Okay. When you first get it out of the package, it will have a cap here with a hole in it. And I'm not sure if you can see, but it has a hole in it. And so you're gonna wanna switch it out, which I don't have right here, but you're gonna wanna switch it out for a cap that comes in the package, and it would be a yellow cap with no hole, okay? Um, <clears throat> also, there is a red, we call it a tongue, because it's red and you pull it, okay? Nurses, we gotta have some fun in our job, right? Uh, so we're going to pull the tongue, and what that does is flush from the bag into the tubing. Okay, something else that I want to note is one side of your tubing is softer, and that is the IV tubing. It feels a lot like IV tubing. The other part is really hard, and that is pressure tubing. So if someone says, 
turn your uh, stopcock off to the patient. Well, the patient has the pressure tubing. The bag has the squishier IV tubing. Okay, very important. And why is that? Well, because the patient has an artery and they have a catheter inside. The catheter is measuring the pressure inside of the patient's artery, okay? If, if this was squishy, the pressure coming through here, it would fluctuate. And we don't want it to fluctuate. We want it to be true pressure. So now think about it oscillating through here, okay? And it's this tubing does not give, so it's a more accurate picture of what the pressure is, okay? <clears throat> um, it, once it reaches the transducer, we don't care if it fluctuates or not, because that's what gives us our reading. So this is going to be squishier, and we want this to be able to flush, and if it was hard, it would not flush as well, okay? So always remember to feel your tubing. One is more squishy, and one is hard. The hard tubing is the pressure tubing, which is also to the patient, we call it, okay? Um, the other thing about pressure lines and how they work is we have atmospheric pressure around us, pushing on us, okay? And we don't want that in our reading. All we want to know is what's happening inside the patient. What is the pressure inside the patient? So we have to tell this transducer, hey, ignore the atmospheric pressure. All we care about is the patient's pressure. So remember back in chemistry class when you used to zero the scale, or even in the hospital, you zero the scale so that all you get is the weight of what you're putting on the scale. Same thing here. We're going to zero out or tell the transducer, hey, this atmospheric pressure is zero. So then all it's going to measure is what's inside the patient. Okay, so very important that you zero your line. And what that means is we're going to tell this that atmospheric pressure is zero. Okay, so we have to open the transducer to air. You're going to do this when you come on shift, when there's any changes, or when you're troubleshooting your line. Okay, but at the minimum, you zero your line at the beginning of your shift. All right, so to prime, let's finish priming. We're going to hang this up, okay, and then we're going to, I'm going to get something to prime it into. Okay, now if you're in a room with a sink, great. If not, use your package. It's sterile, right? So you're going to pull the tongue. Now this points to off, and it says off. So right now, I want it to be off to the patient. Be and the patient is the hard tubing, because I want it to prime from my bag all the way through here out this or out this hole, okay? This is where I need like a third hand. Let me hang up my bag here. We are going to be putting it into a pressure bag. This is a pressure bag. Because remember, think about an artery, once it's accessed, it's going to squirt out. There's pressure in there. So we need something that pushes the fluid just enough to keep stay in that artery and keep it open. Okay? So we put it inside this bag and there's a hook there. Okay? And I will put it under pressure once we're finished. Alright, so here's my thing. Remember I have it off to the patient. And I'm going to pull my tongue. I'm going to open my clamp. You can see it dripping out. Okay. Then I'm going to close my clamp because I now have fluid in that port and I would put on my yellow cap that has no hole. Okay, then I'm going to prime it some more until it gets to the end of my tubing. So same thing, pull your tongue until it comes all the way out of the end of your tubing. Now, the Swan-Gans catheter it may not have a tongue, it may have two white things that you pinch together, but it's the same principle. Okay, so now I'm primed. 
all right? And then this attaches to the patient, okay? Kind of like an IV, this attaches to the end of your arterial line. All right, so now I have my line, and I want to, I have to put it under pressure. Well, on my pressure bag, there's a green area at the 300 millimeters of mercury pressure. And I have a hole here, and I have a manometer like on a blood pressure cuff. So again, this points to off. I'm going to turn this off to my port so that I'm just putting air into my bag. And I'm going to do so until this is in the green area. Now this will leak all day long. So as part of your assessment, whenever you go in the room and you're checking your IV site and your A-line site to make sure it's not bleeding or infected or swollen, you're going to always double check this. It's kind of like part of your IV exam. And if it's less than 300, pump it up a little bit until it's to 300, okay? Once you get it full, you turn it off. So see here you can see that I'm in the green area, the 300 millimeters of mercury. Okay, these bags are disposable. So it's one per patient, okay? So now I have my pressure bag and everything set up, okay? And we hang that on an IV pole. And then there's usually a, some sort of a holster device that we can hook in our transducer so it stays put. And it's usually like this, okay? There's something for the syringe to hook into and there's something for your transducer. So now we have everything primed, everything's ready to go. Now it's very important that we have an accurate reading. So the transducer needs to be at the level of the right atrium. So on your patient, it is the mid-axillary line and then fourth intercostal. So you count down four ribs and then mid-axillary and that is where your right atrium is. So you want to take a, we actually have a level uh, it's in our hospital. It's a ruler with a level tape to it. It's very high tech, but you know what it does the job So you're going to put your holster here and put your level find your um, fourth intercostal space mid axillary and The box part remember the magic computer thing. Okay should be Level Right here with the right atrium, okay, which is mid-axillary, fourth intercostal space, okay? And that should always be level. So if somebody comes in and moves your bed up or down, or this comes out of the holster and goes on the floor, you're not going to have an accurate reading. So make sure that that is always accurate, okay? So we're going to make sure this is at the correct level. Then we're going to zero it. So we're going to open this part here to air, not the patient. So we want to turn it off to the patient. We want to tell this little magical box, this transducer, ignore the patient and just feel the air, become one with the air. Okay, zero to the air. All right, so we have this level. We're going to turn it off to the patient. How do we know it's the patient? Because this tubing is hard. This tubing is not. Off to the patient, okay? and we take off this cap, then on our monitor we hit zero, okay? Once the machine says zero, put our cap back on. Now we open it, so now it's open from patient to transducer, and it, the transducer is now ignoring the air. It thinks that that is zero. And then we should get a waveform and a blood pressure. So briefly, the waveform here this is what the arterial line looks like, okay? So one of the things that's super important, of course your site should be free of infection, free of swelling and all of that, free of bleeding, okay? Just like an IV site, how you would monitor. The other really important thing is you should always have a waveform. If your waveform is flat, then assume the patient is disconnected and bleeding all over the place, okay? That will make you move faster. It could just be something is clamped. Someone came in and drew blood and forgot to close the clamp, okay? Um, or the patient was moving around and something got kinked. But it could be, worst case scenario, patient pulled out their arterial line and now they're bleeding all over. So whenever you walk away from the bed or you look at the monitor, at least on an hourly basis, 
you need to be checking, do I have a waveform? Okay, so that's kind of the basics of setting up your arterial line.